January is in full swing, and of course, you've been sending in some great questions for the next Q&A video, which we are doing right now. So maybe I'm answering your question, maybe I'm not, but either way, I think you're gonna learn something interesting. So let's get into it. The first question comes from Lisa6812, and she says, Melissa, how was your vacation? What can we see from you and Chad in 2015? Love your videos, and thank you for sharing with us. My vacation, our vacation, Chad and I went to St. Martin. We were there for a week. We stayed in Orient Bay. It was phenomenal, very necessary, especially given the fact that Canada is an extremely cold country, if you haven't heard that already. We had beautiful weather. There were so many nice things to do. But most importantly, we turned everything off and just spent time with each other and the island for a week. So no technology for a week, it was awesome. What you can expect from us in 2015, we are gonna keep doing our Saturday releases as we always have. We are going to be putting out more Q&A videos like this and we also are working on a bunch of really interesting, cool projects, most of which are top secret. One which is not is the upcoming launch of our microfiber cloths. But we've also got a lot of other really cool things in store and we will start talking about them when the time is right, so stay tuned. Next, we've got a question from Apolita who says, my question is about that big measurement you occasionally throw out there, mainly for dishwasher cleaner, or for dish cleaner, a fingernail full. Is that just a joke amount, or are you really measuring by your fingernail? Not all fingernails are the same size, long or wide, so I'm guessing that's kind of your joke, but I'd like to know the actual amount of what you mean. Okay, that is actually a really good question. So my little pinky nail, and that's what I always say, a pinky nail. So I'm just trying to give you an idea that it's a small squirt, because a lot of people, when they use dish soap, they go and it just like squirts out. You've got a whole bunch of soap, and it's too hard to clean with that much soap. You actually um, struggle with your cleaning when you have too much product. So I always say use your fingernail as a guide. Um, my fingernail is a guide. I don't have like those long nails. I don't have particularly wide nails, but I suppose if we were to use a more um, generalized measurement, we would say maybe half a US penny might work. I think that might be a fair measurement. Or I'm trying to think of something else that's universal. <sighs> Putting me on the spot here. If you think about an Apple earbud, like one of those earbuds that you get with your Apple iPhone, um, let's say half of one of the little earbuds, like about the sort of conference, whatever. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. So that's the measurement that you're gonna be using, but that is a great question, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to clarify that for you. Ahmed H. Ramadan says, hey Melissa, I have a question for you. How much do you worry about cross-contamination? I'm in the healthcare business, and we have specific ways to ensure working with sterile surfaces, so I'm a little more aware of cross-contamination, which is something that happens to people in your profession, by the way. Do you classify your cleaning tools for specific surfaces or specific rooms? Is it really okay to throw cleaning towels or mops in the washing machine when we wash our clothes? So this is a really excellent question. And what I want you to remember is, when you are cleaning your house, unless you are dealing with somebody who is ill, the stuff that you're gonna encounter in your home on a day-to-day -day basis is not the same that you would encounter in a healthcare environment where you're dealing with people who have acute illnesses. So what I would recommend is, when you're dealing with things like cross-contamination uh, concerns in the kitchen, like raw meat, or if you're cleaning your toilet or something in your bathroom where there's a high concentration of bacteria, that is when I am more careful. So that is when I will use things like paper towel and do one wipe and dispose, or I will have a separate sponge for the bathroom, separate sponge for the kitchen. So yes, in that case, I will classify my tools and I keep my bathroom cleaning sponge in the bathroom and the kitchen stuff in the kitchen, same with cleaning toothbrushes. But I also take measurements to disinfect if I only have one of the tool um, to use around the house. But for the most part, I'm pretty easy going in my house because there's not really much for me to be concerned about. So I hope that helps you and I hope that you uh, can differentiate clearly between what you do at work versus what you do at home. Next question comes from Book Booklin. Sorry, Brooklyn Ringer. And Brooklyn says, Hi Melissa, 
I was just wondering about your workout routine. Are you still doing kickboxing classes and can you give me any advice? Okay, so my workout routine, well, yeah. So I, you know, when I was on vacation, clearly took that opportunity not to lift a pinky, but usually I attend boxing classes three times a week. So I go to a boxing gym and I put on the gloves and I'm punching and all that stuff's going on. Can I give you any advice? I mean, that's a really tough question. It is very uh, unenjoyable for me. I don't like exercising. I really have to drag myself out of bed to do it. I really like boxing because it's a really good way to alleviate stress and anger. And I know you probably think, what does she have to be angry about? All she does is make cleaning videos. There's plenty in my life, okay? And punching is a really good way to deal with that. So I really enjoy it. And I try to focus on that when I am getting out of bed at six in the morning. So if I can give you any advice, it's kind of the same advice that I would give you about cleaning. And if you watch one of those motivation videos, I try to apply the same stuff that I talk about with cleaning to working out because like cleaning, I am not exactly passionate about exercising either, but I know it's good for me. Hope that helped. Veronica Misikova says, Hi Melissa, love your videos. Lately I've been wearing nail polish quite regularly, red, pink, purple, me too. And I don't know why, but I tend to bump my hands against the cupboards in the kitchen. And I think you can imagine the outcome. I have a couple of smears on my white glossy finished kitchen cupboards. I used a microfiber cloth and water and no success, any suggestions. Yes, I know this, this happens to me too. And it's really annoying. Um, also when I'm dealing with paper at the office, I find my nail polish rubs off. So. <coughs> Before I choke, what I can recommend to you is to use a little bit, this might sound obvious, but it'll work, a little bit of nail polish remover on a cotton swab, um, or you can use acetone if you have acetone uh, in lieu of acetone-free nail polish remover, but always remember to test in a little area first, and that should get rid of those streaks. Next comment we have is from 175 Boomer, who says, essential oils, yes, start. I will be a regular US customer, and that is pertaining to what I said in the last Q&A video about maybe one day Chad and I would start selling essential oils because we get asked about them so much. And if you follow us on Instagram and Facebook, you will have seen a picture of me in St. Martin at this really cool place called Tijan where they had a real life um, organ, which is like 300 different essential oils uh, that they use to make perfume and I honestly had the best time and really want to get into essential oil. So who knows, but yes, it's definitely something on my mind. Brianna Sierra asks, Hi Melissa, my question is about business. I like it. My husband and I own a cleaning business, very cool. Right now it's just the two of us doing all the cleaning. How did you know it was time to hire someone else? Do you know of any resources for scaling your business specifically geared toward cleaning? In my perfect world, you would write an ebook about this or provide one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay, I get asked about this a lot. And I used to do um, some sort of online coaching um, with Google Helpouts, but I think what um, I don't have time to write an ebook right now. It is something that I would love to do in the future, like so many other opportunities that are out there. But if there is somebody who is interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can send me an email to info at cleanmyspace.com. Let me know what it is you're looking for specifically. And if I have the time and you're into it, then we can do a Skype and there would be a charge for it, but I could certainly provide you with value and experience and help you uh, with answers to that question. But to answer your question, um, how did I know it was the right time to hire someone else when the amount of inquiries I had exceeded the amount of time I could put into the cleaning? So I didn't want to turn any more customers away, but that's when I knew it was time to get moving on the hiring. Hope that helped. This sounds like a French name, so please pardon my English accent when I read it, but it's Arbre Fleury. Arbre Fleury. I really, I mean, if I, Arbre Fleury, that's how you say it in English, and I'm trying to say it in French, and it just sounds horrible, so I'm really, Chad's laughing so hard, it's embarrassing, <laughs> stop. <laughs> okay, let me just read your question. I love you. 
when you were a child slash teenager, was your room always clean and organized? If not, when did you start paying more attention to the state slash cleanliness of your bedroom? Um, so yeah, when I was a child slash teenager, my room was definitely not clean and organized. Um, and I started paying more attention to that stuff when I started clean my space. Um, and that's kind of when I had what you would call a paradigm shift about cleaning. Um, it still doesn't come naturally and easily to me. It is something I have to work at each and every day. Uh, I don't jump out of bed and get excited to clean or exercise as you've, lear as you've learned about me. I'm a pretty lazy individual, but I understand the importance of cleanliness and keeping things clean. I really appreciate what cleaning and a clean space does for me and my personal state of being and that's what I use to sort of motivate myself to clean on days when I really don't feel like doing it. So that's kind of what my transition was like and who knows maybe one day I will get into the nitty-gritty of kind of my story and explain how things happen. Alex Walker, who has been following us on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter for ages, and hello Alex, we are glad to answer one of your questions, says, like in the Q&A videos, how do you guys deal with the winter blue slash cold weather at home without getting into a rut? I tend to break and fall into new ones all the time during these six to seven long months, and I know Alex lives, I think, in Manitoba, if I am correct, so I know that he is facing way worse winters than I am facing, but either way, winter blues are a real thing, and the, I mean, to be perfectly frank, I find them really tough as well. Chad and I try to get away, which we just did, that really helps. We also try to A, enjoy the moment and not let the terrible, cold, awful, hideous weather affect our emotional state of being, and we still try to stay focused on our goals and things we want to do, uh, you know, we don't, we don't, when one of us sees the other one falling into a rut, we kind of throw the other one a line and try to fish them out. So try to find a buddy or a friend in this situation and figure out ways that you can feed off of each other to bring your level of positivity back up. It is not easy for those of you guys who don't live in cold climates. The winter blues are a real thing and I think we all collectively could use a little bit of help dealing with them. So hope that helps you, Alex. Jamie McGonigal says, I have wondered about this and just out of curiosity, I have to ask, that's what the Q&A video was for. Aren't the two of you married? Which I think I've seen this mentioned before and if so, why don't you take his last name? Yes, we are married. We have been married since August 14th, 2011. And the reason I didn't take Chad's last name is because I like mine better. So that's the reason. Melissa Maker sounds to me better than Melissa Reynolds. And Chad was cool with it. So that's what happened. Mary J asks, love the goodnight pillows. Mind sharing where you pick those up. So the cute thing about these pillows, we have good morning, handsome, good morning, gorgeous. Um, they were gifts, so it's not like I was like, I'll buy the Good Morning Gorgeous pillow for myself, because I'm not like that. But anyway, the cool thing is, they flip around. So they say, uh, Good Night Handsome, and Good Morning Handsome. So that's really cute. These were a gift that we received from one of the young ladies that works in our office. Thank you very much. And they are from Indigo, which is a Canadian retailer that I would say is akin to like Barnes and Noble in the US. So if you're interested, you can go to indigo.ca, I believe, and you can probably find those there. Andy Adimondo says, love the Q&A videos. I have a question, which nail polish are you wearing in this video? So in this video, I am wearing <laughs> no nail polish. I'm wearing, it's over there somewhere, uh, OPI Nail Envy, which is what I put on uh, in between when I'm not wearing nail polish, just to help strengthen my nails a little bit. But if you're interested in what I wear on a regular basis, I do take those very vain Instagram photos like this of my nails, and I take a hundred of them, and then I, you know, fiddle around with the filters, and then I put them up, and I try to put like OPI SE uh, China Glaze, and then I try to put the names. So at least you could find that information there. And if you're not doing so already, you can follow me on Insta, and it's at Melissa Maker. Christina Staples says, I love your headboard almost as much as your videos. Where is it from? 
This lovely unit headboard is from a store called West Elm. So if you are in North America, you are probably familiar with West Elm. It is owned, I believe, by Pottery Barn. Uh, but either way, it's at westelm.com, and I think it's either called the Morocco or the Marrakech headboard. Um, and that's where you can find it. Thank you very much for asking. Anne Marie White says, question for a future video. Do you ever feel under pressure to do videos? Are there times you just want to give yourself a break from doing them? Although you'd probably have a lot of people with very dirty houses crying for you to come back. At least I'd be one of them anyway. Okay, so on one hand, we love doing the videos. If you ever overhear Chad and I at a restaurant eating dinner, we are talking about the videos. Before we go to bed, we're talking about the videos. When we're driving in the car, we're talking about the videos. Videos, aside from the cats, are like a serious conversation going on in our house 24-7. So we love doing the videos. They are so much fun. They are both of our dream jobs. But as anybody with a dream job would tell you, it is nice to have a break. And Chad and I have talked about doing seasons, kind of like a TV show. So maybe taking a little breaky break, you know, a month off for the summer or like during the holidays. But, you know, we haven't quite figured that one out yet. And we've seen other people on YouTube do it. So we're just trying to debate, you know, what the best way to do it is. But in the meantime, we are working tirelessly, putting out videos for you guys each and every week until we get our act together and maybe take a little bit of a break more than a week long vacation. But that's a great question. And I know you guys would be fine if I didn't put a video out one week because you could just watch some of our old stuff. Well, that wraps up this version of Q&A with your cleanest friend on the block, Melissa Maker. The next time we do a video like this, I would love to answer one of your questions. So do leave one down below, whether it has to do with cleaning, business, personal, home decor, you ask it, I will potentially answer it. Thanks so much for all of your great questions so far and for watching the videos and commenting on them. It's fun for me to do them. Hopefully it's fun for you to watch them. And if this relationship works out, I'll just keep doing it. Remember to subscribe to Clean My Space if you haven't done so already. There's a little button that says subscribe button. You gotta do it. Click it. It's free and it's really easy. You can follow Chad and I on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker. He's at the Chad Reynolds. We are at Clean My Space. And we look forward to answering your questions next week. So just a little reminder, even though I said it like one second ago, leave your questions down below. See you soon.